Okay guys, I wanted to make a small tutorial on how I process my drums and some of the tips and tricks that I have for you guys regarding drum processing and uh, yeah, I hope you learned something new and let's get right into it. Um, so first off, I just selected some really really simple samples. I have a kick and a snare. Those are really simple. On that note, I also want to tell you that sample selection and your sample library are some things that I can't really help you with. Sample selection is something that over time you'll get better at and find better samples that match better together. And your sample library is something that you just have to collect over the years. I've collected my library since 12 or 13 years. So obviously I've put a lot of money and time into it. And yeah, that's something that you just have to get over time. And that's not something that just magically appears. Um, but yeah, this is a really simple kick and snare. The loop sounds like this. Really, really straightforward. And uh, we'll edit the snare a bit. I put a frequency shifter on it and a transient master. Uh, the frequency shifter just helps it to get more of its own sound. So if I ha don't have it on it, it sounds like this. And if I have it on it, you can just drag this one down as much as you like. I usually just like to drag it down about 200, uh, 100 to 200 uh, hertz. And what it does is it picks up the frequency of the whole sample and just shifts it down. But it helps a lot with getting a more unique sound. I put a transient master on it as well. I used the native instruments one. This is the one that I liked best, but you can use any other transient master. It doesn't really matter, but I used this one and I uh, gave it a bit more attack and put, uh, pulled back the, the sustain a bit. As you can hear, it just sounds more tacky and more, uh, more on point. Then regarding the hi-hats, I have this loop right now, but I will eliminate all the effects for now and just focus on the hi-hats hi -hat, hi themselves. Um, I'll quickly just go through my hi-hats that I have in right now. Really simple, really basic. I just went to my samples, put in hi-hats, clicked on all results and just looked through my whole library. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I have a lot of hi-hats. This is the, the, the library. And I just uh, selected them all with shift and uh, dragged them into the, into the drum loop. These are the samples and let's go into the, the grid view and look at how I set them. I can just re quickly redo this so you see how it's done. Um, you can select any sample you want, any, any hi-hat you want and just um, duplicate them like this. But right now they're still pretty stale. Uh, let's select every second one of them and pull back the front a bit. And as you can hear the more you do it, the more it gives it this shuffly, groovy kind of kind of rhythm. You can also do this, do this with the groove box, but I like to do it manually because then I have full control over how the groove sounds. Let's copy this to the end. And uh, let's make this a bit shorter, just one. And let's just randomly assign those notes to one of, the, one of my hi-hats that I selected. And now if you listen to it, you can hear that the groove is way better than before. And uh, yeah, that's that's the way that I do a lot of my drums. Just really simply drag in five to six uh, different hi-hats and just randomly shuffle them through the sound. And now we're going to assign some effects. First off, frequency shifter as well here, just to give it a more unique sound and make it a bit more dirty and gritty before, after, but now the problem is they're a bit too harsh for me. I like the sound of them, but they're too harsh and too too sharp on the ears. Uh, that's why I put a cabinet on it. This is also a stock Ableton stock program. You can play with speaker, microphone and all those other settings. 
Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it, but uh, I just uh, randomly selected some settings. And that's what I got. And then put a transient master on it as well, because I want it to be more sharp and more on point. I pulled back the attack minus 35% and pulled back the sustain minus 60%. What it does is it gives the loop more, more room in between and makes it less busy. Small difference, but I think it uh, it is a big big difference in the in the in the grand picture. And then last but not least, I put a convolution reverb on it. This is a Max for Life tool, so if you don't have Max for Life, go download it on the Ableton official website. I love convolution reverb. It does a lot of crazy things. Uh, I usually select the type experimental because they're they're the most interesting. And this is just a. It's I think it's even the first one that I got. The first preset and I like it a lot and it sounds like this and what I like to do is pull down the decay and the size a lot for drum samples it just makes it less less reverby and uh, puts it closer to the to the ears yeah and that's what the hi-hats and the drums sound together already sounding pretty good what I like to do as well right here is just to randomly select a drum loop of a jazz break or something like this and just drag them into the file, uh, into the drum loop and uh, this is what this, the loop sounds like. If you don't have something like this in your library, you can download it or on Splice or on YouTube, wherever you like. Just type in uh, jazz breaks or something like that, or breakbeat, and then you're gonna find loops like this. And uh, I just dragged it in. I put a frequency shifter on it to pitch it down a bit. I deleted all the low ends. I have a EQ on it that cancels all the low end because I don't want the kick of the breakbeat to interfere with my kick that I put on top. I put a transition master on it as well so it's a bit less busy and more controlled. As you can see minus 80% sustain and what I put on here is a very very nice program that you definitely have to check out uh, it's from output they also made um, portal which is a really similar uh, tool to this one which you definitely have to check out I put this one on as well this makes some really crazy stuff that I don't know how it works but for drums especially this this tool is great I will show you some of the presets I'll just click I'll randomly click through And here, especially for, for, for drums, it's a great, great VST. So, I mean, Christmas is around the corner. It's a bit expensive, but if you have a wish list, this definitely has to be on it if you don't already have it. Yeah, um, I selected Flex Bounds, I think, just to give it more character and uh, give it more distortion. Sounds way better. Uh, yeah, the last thing is, uh, this is how I usually do my sort of like a noise wave in the background. It sounds like this. And what I do is I put in a serum. I disable the oscillator A. I put in a noise. I select Sim Mic Bleed. This is a preset that I like a lot. And this is how it sounds like. And what I now do is make a LFO. So I select LFO 1, I press shift right here, delete those with a double click and have a really, really, really simple sawtooth um, envelope. And I'll drag this onto the level of the noise. Really, really simple, but sounds really nice. And I'll close Serum. Put in a MIDI block. You can choose any key, it doesn't really matter. It's the same sound. Um, and then, once I have this part, I'll just press freeze and flatten it. 
and now it's the same thing that I already did up here um, you have this type of I'll, I'll quickly disable the effect you have this type of loop and now let's put some effects on it I cancelled the low ends put a frequency shifter on it as always and a transient master as always and it sounds like this Yep, that's about it. Yeah, these are some really simple tricks that I use on all my drums. And uh, I hope you found out something new and something that you can adopt for your own projects in the future. And uh, yeah, I, I think for drum processing and drum programming, it's really important that you don't do patterns that are too robotic. Uh, make something shuffle, make something more organic, uh, play with the timings of the different percussion notes. I think that's really important. Usually I have my kick and my snare on time just inside of the grid but have all the precautions and the toms and all that stuff really really laid back or just out of time but not too much just a bit so it just gives it this more organic feel and the groove is more organic yeah and definitely check out frequency shifter check out thermal and check out portal which i didn't show in this tutorial but i'll probably show in a, in a future tutorial check out those tools um they're really random and that's what i love about them you don't know what you're gonna get out of them if you put them onto a sound and that's what makes them great and if you have any future suggestions for tut other tutorials that i should do for you guys write it in the comments and thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah See you next time.